Here we go, World Series, Rays, Dodgers. The series starts in Los Angeles. Dodgers finished the season with 97 wins, while the Rays only had 93. So the National League side will have home field advantage in this one. Jacob deGrom versus Walker Buehler here. And we skip ahead to the bottom of the third where Francisco Lindor takes a pitch above the strike zone. Deep to right center and out of here, giving the Dodgers an early 1-0 lead. Top half of the next inning, Wander Franco is going to smoke one to right and just tuck it over the right field wall, tying the score at 1. Next inning, Randy Rosarena up. He's going to chop one down the third baseline fair and cruise into second with a double, so the Rays are in business here. Two men in scoring position, only one out. Next up, Manuel Margot. Been clutched throughout this postseason, and he'll deliver again, grounding out to score a run. The Tampa rally would fizzle, but they take the lead there. Bottom of the same inning, Max Muncy has an answer for the Dodgers as he doubles into the gap. So they too now have two men on in scoring position. Francisco Lindor comes up and he will score the run from third with a sacrifice fly. Runner also tagging from second there. And that will prove to be valuable because the next header up, Mark Canna, will also fly one to left. Randy Rosarena has thrown a couple guys out from the outfield this postseason. But the Dodgers test his arm anyway, and they do win that battle. So L.A. takes a 3-2 lead into the sixth. Top six, Dustin May now in. He hangs a slurve, and Salvador Perez makes him pay. A moonshot deep to left to, th to tie the score once again. And then later on in the same inning, Chris Bryant. Not going to be the last time we hear his name in this highlight. He's going to go deep to left center for a huge go-ahead three-run homer, his first homer of the postseason. Next inning, Salvador Perez is at it again. Man in scoring position, he deposits a single to left center. So at this point, the Rays are blowing game one wide open. DeGrom still in the game, bottom seven. Diego Cartaya leading off the inning for the Dodgers, and he's going to go deep to left. So DeGrom's day is done. Another... Somewhat rough start for the Tampa Bay Ace, surrendering four runs. Jason Adam gets out of a bit of a jam, though, to end the inning. He's going, he's going. Top eight, Brandon Lau steps up to the plate after a leadoff single, and he's going to single into the right center field gap. Big turn for Lau there. He thought about two. Next up, Randy Rosarena. He's going to bloop one to center. And it is going to fall, but the runner on third did not get a good read. However, the Dodgers cue the Benny Hill music. The Dodgers throw erratically into the infield. Not even sure who that throw was supposed to be to. So everyone moves up a base. And then the next batter, Brewster Gratterall, throws wildly, allowing another run to score. And a sacrifice fly will extend Tampa Bay's lead to six. So the Rays are turning game one into a laugher here. Top nine, Tampa not done just yet. Salvador Perez continues to haunt the Dodgers as he doubles into the gap. His third hit of the day. And then Chris Bryant steps up and once again puts a charge into one. This one deep to left center. Not quite over the wall, but I guess it is on a bounce. So ground rule double for the Rays there. They extend their lead to seven, and Brandon Lau puts the finishing touches on a dominant Tampa Bay performance with a two-run single. In the bottom half of the inning, Tyler Glass now getting some action. He's going to get Max Muncy to pop out to third. So the Rays take game one in Los Angeles 13-4. to four. Game two. Clayton Kershaw looking to get the Dodgers back on track. And top first, we mentioned Chris Bryant a good amount in the last highlight, and here he goes again. He tees off on a fastball from Kershaw that stayed up, and the Rays have an early 1-0 lead. Luis Castillo on the bump for the Rays. Doesn't take long for the Dodgers to respond as Chris Taylor doubles into the gap, and that's going to score a run. So before Castillo's even recorded an out, the score's already tied up. 
And later on the same inning, Mookie Betts will ground into a double play, but with the runner on third, that does give the Dodgers the lead. It's still 2-1 to one in the bottom of the third, when Mark Canna steps up and steps out. Home run to left field. Doubles the Dodger lead. Canna's first of the postseason. Kershaw cruising. Here we see him get Randy Rosarena to ground out to end the fourth. No surprise that the veteran would come up big in a situation like this. Francisco Lindor is going to double with one out in the bottom of the fifth, but actually it becomes a triple because Randy Rosarena doesn't hit the cutoff, man. I guess that's a nice lesson for all the kids out there looking for the fundamentals. A lot of situations where you need to hit the cutoff, man. It comes back to haunt the Rays as the next batter, Mark Canna, hits a sacrifice fly that Lindor scores on. So it's 4-1 Dodgers in the six. The Rays, two men on, nobody out, looking like they might rally, but Chris Bryant strikes out and Salvador Perez hits into a 6-4-3 double play. So just like that, the Rays rallies extinguished. Top eight, the Rays continue to struggle as that, with two outs in the eighth, has been their kind of magic elixir at times in this postseason when a lot of rallies have started, but no such luck today. They go down meekly in the eighth and meekly in the ninth, and the Dodgers bite back and win game two. Heading to Tampa Bay for game three. Marcus Stroman on the hill for the Rays and finds himself in trouble early on as he walks the bases loaded. Miguel Vargas with one out. It's going to fly one to left. Rosarena squares it up once again, but his throw is not in time, a bit offline. So the Dodgers jump out in front early. A base hit by Johnny DeLuca to right makes it look like the Dodgers are going to tack on another run, but Ian Happ, who has struggled to throw accurately from the outfield, delivers a laser to home plate to end the inning with the Rays only surrendering one run. As we see, though, Happ is unable to keep the magic going at the plate as he strikes out. Top five, Dodgers have a chance to blow the game open a bit, but Stroman is able to get a strikeout and a pop-out to wiggle out of a third and first jam. Bottom six, Dustin May is in. After Tony Gonsolin was removed for a high pitch count, and he's going to get Chris Bryant to pop out. It's a big out there for the young righty. Bottom seven, bases loaded again, this time with one out. So Yandy Diaz, his fly ball, does deliver a sacrifice fly, even though it didn't get down. Later on in the same inning, Salvador Perez can't come through with a clutch hit as he grounds out to third. So we stay tied at one, heading to the eighth. With one out in the eighth, though, Mookie Betts is going to victimize a roll to Chapman with a deep fly ball to left. Chapman had been great this postseason for the Rays, but gives up a go-ahead run there. Bottom of the same inning, 1-2 count, two outs, nobody on. Chris Bryant, who else? He's going to take a pretty good sinker and deposit it over the center field wall. We skip ahead to the top of the 11th, still 2-2, two, two, and another 1-2 count with two outs. Sees a home run produces this time. Max Muncy goes deep to right. And a huge go-ahead homer for the Dodgers off the Rays' closer, Kendall Graveman, who had been Pretty much unhittable so far in the postseason. In the bottom half, the Rays can't mount a rally, and the Dodgers take back home field with a 4-2 extra innings win in Game 3. Heading to Game 4, the Rays look to Zach Eflin as they try to bounce back. Bottom 1, Julio Rios on the mound. Nolan Arenado is going to double down the third base line, so the Rays are in business with two outs here in the bottom of the first. After a long at-bat, though, Randy Rosarena will chase a 3-2 breaking pitch, and the Rays get nothing. Top of the second, Eflin finds himself in a bit of trouble, but he gets Lindor to ground out to him. And then top third, similar situation. Runner on third, two outs. Eflin induces a pop-up from Mookie Betts. So another jam avoided. Later on in the game, still scoreless, Eflin gets a strikeout to end both the sixth, and then in the seventh, he gets a strikeout, and Pete Fairbanks will finish it off there. 
So nice work by the Rays. We skip ahead all the way to the bottom of the 10th. Not much action in this one, but Nolan Arenado, who had a double earlier, is going to change that here. Walk off Homer gives the Rays their fourth consecutive victory at home via the walk off. They lost game three, obviously, at home, but every game for the past four, the Rays have won at home. It's been off of a walk off. So exciting stuff in Tampa, and the Rays get a much needed win to even the series at two. Heading to Game 5, Jacob DeGrom on the hill for the Rays, and he's tasked with facing Bobby Miller. So kind of an unexpected decision by Dave Roberts there. Wander Franco's going to lead off the game with a triple, not wasting much time trying to get the Rays on the scoreboard here. And Yandy Diaz will follow that up and ensure that the triple is not wasted as he singles Franco home. And just like that, the Rays have a 1-0 lead. Bottom of the second, the Rays threatening again. Two men on, two outs, but Manuel Margot can't come through. We skip ahead to the fourth, and at this point it became clear that the ground had some special stuff tonight. He strikes out bets with a curveball, his eighth strikeout on the night, and you see there that the Dodgers have yet to successfully record a hit, and that is something we can take note of as the ground strikes out Muncie to end the fifth. Bottom five, nobody on two outs. We get a walk. To Wander Franco, a walk to Yandy Diaz. At this point, Noah Syndergaard has taken over for Miller. And a walk to Salvador Perez. So three consecutive walks to load the bases. Nolan Arenado, last night's hero, he comes through again. Huge two-run single there. Gives the Rays some much-needed insurance, although we'll see just how needed that insurance was here in a bit. Ian Happ is next up. He's going to drive in two runs as well as he smokes one in the left center field gap. So Hap has a double. All of a sudden, it's 5-0 Tampa Bay. Chris Bryant steps up. He's going to take a walk. Brandon Lau, 2-2. Off-speed sits back on it. He deposits a single to right and is going to move to second as the Dodgers threw home unsuccessfully. Randy Rosarena steps up, and he's going to double to center. And all of a sudden, what was a 1-0 game has become a laugher as the Rays, with two outs and nobody on, string together a combination of walks and another hit here from Manuel Margot to drive in a Rosarena. Eight straight runs, all produced with two outs, nobody on. So special stuff for the Rays there in a big moment. Top six, DeGrom still cruising. He's going to get Mark Hanna to ground into a shift uh, not really aided but nevertheless get him to ground into a, uh, a put out to end the inning bottom six Chris Bryant no surprise he goes deep again his fourth homer in five games in this series Mookie Betts he's also going to ground out to second just like Cannon did to end the seventh so the ground is through seven but his pitch count is going to prevent him from going any further Top eight, Jason Adam takes over. He gets a strikeout of Andy Pages. A strikeout of J.D. Martinez. And a strikeout of Max Muncy. And the Rays are three outs away from some truly special history here. Adam has the ninth again. And there's always at least one moment in a no-hitter where a good defensive play is made. And that one, Lindor smoked one to left to what would have been left but the Rays were able to make the play, and then Adam is able to get a punch out to end this most special of evenings in Tampa Bay. The Rays throw a combined no-hitter between Jacob DeGrom and Jason Adam. And not only that, but take a commanding 3-2 lead in this World Series. So back to Los Angeles we go. Top second, Chris Bryant's up. I bet you know what's going to happen. Chris Bryant home run, his fifth of the series. And for someone who has experienced the glories of a World Series before, it's no surprise that he wants another championship to add to his mantle. J.D. Martinez gets the Dodgers' first hit in a long time with a single here in the second. And Diego Cartaya, he thinks, oh, well, well, that's actually a pretty good idea. Why don't I try that? Next hitter up, he's going to produce a hit. He's going to actually double in two runs with one that Hap kind of butchered in right field. So we skip ahead to the fifth. Yandy Diaz, the man in scoring position, two outs. He can't come through. He strikes out. 
Bottom five, Luis Castillo gets out of some trouble, striking out Mookie Betts to get out of a jam. Top six, Rays have two men on, they can't come through. So we skip ahead to the top of the eighth. We mentioned earlier the Rays do some magic with four outs to go, and Nolan Arenado keeps that train rolling as he homers to tie the game. We skip ahead to the top of the 12th. Salvador Perez has been so clutch throughout this postseason. He delivers one final time, doubling to left, and the Rays have a 3-2 lead here in Los Angeles, three outs away from their first franchise World Series championship. Down to their last strike, the Dodgers do single to keep things alive. So Freddie Freeman steps in with two men on, two outs. And Kendall Graveman gets him to roll over to second. Brandon Lau handles it, and the Tampa Bay Rays are World Series champions. The investment from owner Darren Kramer comes to fruition. The best team that money could buy does come through on all of its promise and potential. And the Rays, while they're at it, also avenge a World Series loss from a couple years prior that also came in six games. So we see the reactions of Randy Arozarena and Manuel Margot after the final out. Awesome moment for this franchise in their 25th anniversary year. And very gratifying for Kevin Cash, I'm sure. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Hope you enjoyed. And we'll see you again soon from Detroit, Michigan. Take care.